So today I'm doing a video on how we make a video and I wanted to kind of show you the setup, the gear I use, and my open source workflow for it. So this is how I make YouTube videos. I've actually gone through a lot of iterations, but because this is the first one I think I've documented top to bottom, we're gonna call it version 1.0, when technically I've lost track of versioning, but for purposes of YouTube here, and when I go back and say, okay, what did I change? I can make version, you know, one point whatever, or when I do a lot of changes, maybe a version 2X, we'll figure out like all projects that are open source and you try to figure out what you're gonna do for versioning numbers. And that can be the complicated part occasionally, at least for me, because I like, is this a big change, an incremental change? But let's get started. What we have here is, and I'm gonna swap between the cameras and then I'm going to show how I actually put this video together on the editing side. And the reason I have to do both is because my YouTube channel is obviously a lot of tutorials and some videos like this. So there's a mix of things I do and I wanna kinda of show all of them. So this part is the filming part. As it's fair that we call it filming. Nothing is film, it's all digital. But this is the part where we do things in the studio and how we edit it together. And up here I have a GoPro just out of frame. Then we have two lights. I have my Aston microphone in shotgun mode, which is currently the audio source. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the audio when I do behind here, I guess I'll just VO. Uh, so I have my aperture light and my cheap softbox from, I well, I think I got it either from Amazon or eBay. I'll find an Amazon link for you. This is not an expensive one at all. That's a little bit more money, but not, um, excuse me, that one's a little bit more money, but I still really like it because it works really well. It's an LED light, it's portable, it's got batteries on it. Uh, but now that we're doing more studio stuff, I'm leaving these set up more often. Anyways, so when we're doing a product review, for example, and I got a couple products here, and I got my Pixel phone, which I'm gonna get ready to do a review on. I currently have my GoPro mounted to a boom stand over here, and this boom stand works really good to hold a camera. Now, I've Marvin's camera's not here right now. I've been borrowing his 70D until I can decide whether or not I want to buy another 70, which I, I think I have a deal on a line on one right now, but that's primarily what we're shooting with over there is the Canon 70D. I'm really happy with the camera. Everyone's like, oh, it doesn't do 4K or it doesn't do this. I'm like, I don't think my tutorials would be any better in 4K. If they're not adding any value, then eh, why, why even add it to there? Also, we, for the TV hookup, so we can see what we're doing, we have a wire going from that so this is what I see over here. So occasionally I do glance over there, or try never to look, but when we're setting up, this is an easy way for me to see what's going on, is to look, we just plug it into the TV. I understand everything that's going on with the camera and you know, gives me a good idea of things on there. Now, with the Magic Lantern software, it's nice because it gives me the audio level so I can make sure the audio is good on this. And this as to microphone, I'll leave a link to below. I'm really happy with this purchase. Now, everyone's like, oh, Rode Mic Pro, this, that. I tried the Rode Mic. I had the Rode Mic Go. I liked it, uh, but I like the audio quality better on the Aston. And two, it does stereo. So when we did that group setting where we had all of us here doing hot sauce, the Aston microphone did a phenomenal job. Uh, we have it, this is also on a boom stand. But I will show you that these lights here and the couple poles, it's all I really need to get a lot of this done. I am though, maybe today I'll do this. I didn't like, and I'm kind of getting sick of the orange behind us because I think it detracts from some of the colors. Uh, so we're gonna probably switch to just a gray background. We wanna do maybe some color splashes. That'll be like a version 1.1 because it's changing the background's hardly a major change. But what's important is the workflow and how this gets done and how the videos get produced. So this is filming, that's filming. I'm gonna splice in a little bit of filming off of this so I can pull the whole project together and show you what's going on. But I'm gonna switch to the camera on here right now. Um, or maybe I should do the GoPro. I'll do the GoPro. It's got a better audio because I can put a microphone on the GoPro and I'll walk around and kind of show you from the other side what this looks like. So this is the aperture light. I know it's kind of rigged in here. Um, that's unfortunate, but we're gonna we're gonna put that in our right. That's actually on my to-do list. It's got a screw, it's really solid, it isn't going anywhere. This is battery powered. This is the Aperture AL528S. Uh, so we can dial in if we need to do this. It's on a tilt, it's keep it plugged in, but if I unplug it, like I said, it's on battery, so it loses no brightness, works really well. This is the less expensive, and hopefully the microphone doesn't pick up too much noise from it, but I won't get too close. This mic on the GoPro picks up a hum. Just generic, uh, cheap softbox from Amazon with fluorescent tubes in it, which is why it causes problems with this microphone. This I really like. 
I'll leave a link to this. This is the boom stand that we use for holding the camera up. Works really well. And this is one of the things that's really cool about this boom stand. Let me break it down real quick. And it drops down. Simple as that. Now it's locked in place and then those legs fold up so we can make it nice and small. Same with this, we hang the gear kind of up here uh, when I'm not using it that way, when we need more chairs and more places, which we keep the chairs all nice and neat kind of on the wall here. This is where all the extra gear ends up. So these are lots of connectors, doodads. There's all our podcasting equipment, uh, different ball heads. I really like these Joby heads, they're great for holding things on. This little case is where we put things like the GoPro and the other cameras. That's how we do our time lapses. Charging, drone stuff. The drone's actually up there on the shelf. And when it's all done, everything goes in here. We lock it. That way when we have like get togethers with the random people coming in and out, all the gear and all the little doodads, I don't want even touching them. And it's less I'm worried about people stealing it. It's much more that people pick things up and touch it and lenses are super expensive. Speaking of which, that also brings me to this. This is my lenses, the Sigma 10 to 20. So this is for the real wide angle shots. I really like this lens. I've had it for like 10 years. This they call the Canon Nifty 50, 50 millimeter. It is a F 1.8. You can pick this lens up for like really cheap. It's super inexpensive. I definitely like it quite a bit. Um, but some of the other gears, just miscellaneous stuff, you know, lens cleaner, stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a separate uh, gear video. I do have a lapel mic in here, and that's what this is. I just don't use it that often. It's kind of nice when you want to walk around and uh, get the microphone, but I don't do that as much. When I do, these are the Audio Technica Pro 88WRs. Pick these up for dirt cheap on eBay. Uh, I just dislike the fact that they use a 9 volt battery and they create a little bit of a hiss in the background. So anytime I use it, I have to edit that out and that annoys me. The Canon 70D itself is got the kit lens, the 18 to 135 with the image stabilizer. We leave it off because it actually uses a little bit of battery um, when it's on a tripod, but I use it, of course, if I'm trying to shoot it freehand, which is pretty rare. Freehanding the camera, unless you're a really good cameraman, which I am not, uh, not needed so i try to tripod as much as i can even this has some shake now this is just using hdmi out and that goes up there there's your hdmi in the wall goes to the ceiling comes back down behind the tv and it's hard to see but back there behind the tv is where all the lines come through to get that signal from over here to over there that's simple uh effective though and i like it here is i dislike wires along the floor if you didn't notice even these wires go plug in underneath and over here so there's nothing across our path the only thing that kind of goes across the path is the audio cable when i plug it into the canon but that's life you gotta i haven't really found an easy solution but that's why we run it on this taller boom stand from the asden microphone up over back to the camera it's easy enough for people to walk right under it and uh, this is that Asden microphone that has both the stereo and mono features, low pass filters, uh, some boosting. The auto mode is my favorite because it automatically turns on when the camera turns on and then turns back off. So let's turn all these things off and get to editing. That's obviously where the open source comes into play and how, how it all actually happens. In case you're wondering, my GoPro setup, pretty simple. It's a GoPro with one of them metal cages a little uh, hot shoe mount and the road might go and the stupid $50 GoPro adapter that you need to have to make this all work. I have no idea. This is a cheap tripod that it, I bought all this off Craigslist. A guy who was just dumping it for really cheap or at least uh, this metal case and this thing. So I don't know what brand it is. It's some off brand XS series, but it gets the job done for well doing what I just did with it. So it's uh, definitely handy for that. So for those of you who've seen my desk before, you know I have a three desk layout. I'm gonna jump to the other camera here and show you, I zoom back out against the wall. These are the three monitors, so everything's kind of spread across all these screens. 
and now I'm going to insert that video into the video of me making the video. Now, this is actually could be showing me how to screw up making a video <laughs> because I edited the end of it and did a bunch of editing on how I did the editing and I don't like the, any of the ending of it. So I'm going back and re-editing and re-splicing just the ending of it. I realized that uh, I was a little bit too zoomed out trying to show three screens. That's how I edit and that didn't portray well at all on YouTube. You just couldn't see what I was doing. So I'm going back to dragging everything. So this is the three screen layout with, well, there's different layouts here. This is a three screen layout. This is how my uh, layout actually looks when uh, it's in process and in working. This is a preview window on one side, but obviously this is really hard for you guys to see what's going on. And I realized that after I recorded me editing, but the video is edited. So I'm just going to cut out the end and redo that part. Uh, I tried it like this and this is also hard to see what I'm doing. So we're just going to bring everything to the middle screen and get rid of the webcam so you can see what I'm doing for the editing part. Cause this, this is the hard part to show because there's a lot that goes into editing. So I showed some of how I copied files and things like that. And that's, I thought maybe it'd be interesting, but maybe not in post. So I do is I'm done. I kind of proof most of my videos. Uh, I, I try to proof them, but we'll just bring over here and show you what I do. So here is the uh, editing part that I didn't like. This is gonna get deleted. Here's all the stuff that came off of all the cameras I used. So I had my GoPro, I had my uh, screen capture, which I'm doing again right now, which was called Finally, I just named it that. You know, my naming schema, that's whatever makes it work for you. But what I will talk about is a couple little things. So one of them is, and I've talked about this before, I use SyncThing, and SyncThing is backing up my video folder continuously as I drop things in here. I did a whole video on that. Um, and whatever your workflow is, making sure you have a solid backup. I like automated backups, specifically using the sync thing tool, uh, and it backs up to my free NAS continuously. So it's on my hard drive, it's backing up over to there, so that's getting copied over. Then we just drag all these files, which I'm not gonna drag them again, but you just drag them all into Caden Live. And then we drag them all to the tracks, and I'm holding the control key, zooming in and out. I got a tutorial on how to use Caden Live and you know putting all this together. Now I started the intro of this video with a a uh, little classic 8-bit song. Let me see if I can change the view here. So there's my little preview that I dragged right there. So you can see going through editing. Now normally I edit on the other monitor, but like I said, there's not an easy way to present a dual monitor layout. It just, unless you have a 4K and I export this at 4K, you wouldn't be able to read all this. But this is me cutting between all of them. You line up the audio, you get it all, say, okay, here's the audio, this is the GoPro video, this is the main camera video, and that's how I cut between them for the overhead shots. And then I'm using OBS at the end, uh, which I'll drag my OBS screen over here, which it just goes to infinity because it's recording, OBS recording, recording, OBS recording, and makes kind of a cool effect in the background. <laughs> um, and OBS is how I do my voiceover. So I got my uh, setups here, and this is what it looks like back on a three screen layout. So let's do this, view, this is actually how it looks. I've shrunk the screens over here, just kind of give you guys an idea and a view. And all the voiceovers are recorded on a Yeti microphone in my little office with soundproofing here. And it, very important, soundproofing on the other side because your voice goes this way, it reflects back. So the back is to get rid of sound reflection at the back and the front is to get rid of the sound reflection in the front to kind of keep a dead area uh, for the voiceover work. But you know these tools are all free and open source uh, and wonderful. Caden Live is great. OBS great. OBS is cross-platform, and someone will ask this. Caden Live. I know they are working on a Windows version. Sorry, I've tried it. That doesn't work very well. It's once it's all done, we're going to render and process, and then we jump over to GIMP. And I have a template saved here in GIMP uh, that's got the little black bar at the bottom. And then I just go on the web and literally like the Canon 70D, I typed in Canon 70D transparent. There it is there. I typed in Caden, and these are just Google image search. Well, actually this one didn't need to be. I just went to their website and it's part of, that's their logo off their header. I just grab it and you can actually just go copy image, edit, paste, new layer and you can get things added on there just like that in GIMP. Uh, GIMP is not as easy to use as Photoshop. It's been a struggle because I'm a Photoshop guy, so I struggled learning it. But if you started out with GIMP, 
there's some great tutorials you can find on it. Um, I'm not good enough to make a tutorial on it, but I will tell you, I've been doing my thumbnails and everything for quite a while um, and editing the basics like what you're seeing here in GIMP and it's worked out really well for me. So it definitely, definitely can be done. And once it's all done, because GIMP saves in its own special format, we file, we export this, and I called it how we make YouTube videos, the gear in the process, and the open source software. And like I said, I'm not going in depth on the software. I have a tutorial on Caden Live already. Um, I don't really have one on OBS, but it's maybe I'll do one at some point. OBS feels almost self-explanatory. You just keep adding the different scenes, like the webcam, and then that's what all these are. Some are just microphones. Uh, middle screen webcam, just left screen, uh, right screen, all my screens with me at the bottom. And then you can just go here. And if I want to put myself in the middle for this, but this is, well, technically this is where I sit because this is the, the layout you're seeing above is my three screen layout that's in here. So hopefully this was helpful, kind of give you an idea how we do this. I will leave links below to the tutorials I have on how to use Caden Live, how to get started with Caden Live and editing video. So this is probably the part people find the most challenging. Uh, recording stuff with OBS, load it. It's pretty straightforward. Maybe I'll do a specific tutorial on there, but OBS is a great way to do screen capture. Um, I might do a specific review on the 70D, but there's a lot of them out there. That camera's been around since 20. 13. So that's, uh, it's a, I'm still happy with it. It's a really great camera. I don't really, people are like, oh, go mirrorless. Yeah, cool. Uh, maybe I have the 70D. I don't plan to replace it until it breaks. So uh, for now, it's a great camera. And it, it's not about the camera. It's about coming up with teaching someone something. The story and the narrative uh, is much more important. The tutorial, the knowledge sharing is important. Uh, 1080 seems good enough for knowledge sharing, at least for me for now. If I thought my knowledge would look better in 4K, great. I don't have a 4K monitor and statistically, most people don't either. I know it's supposed to be future thinking, but especially tech stuff, I you have to keep producing because all this is completely irrelevant five years from now. That's generally how it works. Uh, hopefully you found some of this helpful, give you an idea of uh, behind the scenes, how we produce YouTube videos, how this works. You know, if you like to comment here, like and subscribe. I will do my best to reply to all the comments. I've complained before about YouTube comments sucking. I, I don't see all the messages. It's a YouTube thing. I've talked to other YouTubers with the same problem. We also have the forums to help alleviate that over on Facebook. Links are uh, below. Plus all the gear links and some of the details of all the stuff we use will be in here. So hopefully this was uh, helpful. Have a great day and enjoy. Get started on this open source editing if you're interested in this. I mean, go get these programs. They're free. Start dabbling and playing and uh, watch my other Caden Live tutorials to get you started on this part of it. Because the video edit, the, the press record is easy. The editing, I won't lie. This is some, there's a little effort that goes into this. There's a learning curve, but I think it's worth it. Thanks.